Hi everyone, this is Lisa Solenenko from Cookery Nation, back with another video. Today what we're going to be doing is focusing all on kitchen safety. This is really important. Let me first just check to see that everything is working properly. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, looks good. Okay, kitchen safety. Kitchen safety is a really, really important thing to discuss before we get involved in all manner of cooking. There's certain things that people just assume everyone knows, but in fact they don't. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a strategy. We're gonna go through the cleaning aspects in the kitchen we're going to go through storage of food, food preparation, and ultimately cooking. And we're just going to touch on all these different parts and um, give you some general guidelines. We're going to have, we have some other resources on the website that you can have a look at and get to know. But I wanted to go over some of these rules in an actual kitchen. So let's get started. When we're talking about cooking in the kitchen, let's first talk about cleaning. Before you start cooking, get everything tidied up. Get all the dishes in the sink and washed, get the counters cleaned off, get anything that is gonna get in your way out of your way. You wanna have clean surfaces, clean areas. One of the first things I do is, before I start cooking, I make sure I have a sink of soapy water ready so that as I'm cooking, I can wash dishes as I go. Really, really important. The other thing is, there's two different kinds of clean. There's dirt clean, where you, know, you clean off the crumbs and any dirt and debris. The other kind of clean is sanitizing clean. This is important when you're doing things like cooking with raw meats and things like that. You want to be able to sanitize it. Now, some people will buy the this spray can uh, sanitizer, but you know the funny thing is most people use it wrong. It says in really tiny print there you're supposed to spray it everywhere and let it sit for five minutes, then wipe it up. What most people do is they will spray it, or even the ones that come in the wipes, they'll wipe everything down and then dry it immediately. That's not going to work. So, if you think making your own is going to take up a lot more time than buying the commercial stuff, you're wrong because it works the same way. You make your own bleach solution with one teaspoon of bleach to three cups of water. That's all. Get, it, get an old um, spray bottle or buy a new one from the dollar store or whatnot and keep this under your sink at all times. So, let's say you're going to be dealing with a lot of um, raw vegetables that aren't going to be cooked and whatnot. Give your counters a quick spray over it, let it sit for five minutes, wipe it all down. If you are cooking with, working with raw chicken, you want to be spraying your cutting boards afterwards and your area with bleach water solution. Don't go crazy with this. This is five, one teaspoon to three cups of water. Most people would assume, I see people do this all the time, they're gonna put this much bleach in this much water. That's way too much, you don't need that much. Just one teaspoon to three cups, that's it. And you still need to be careful, even with this weak strength, because it will still blot your clothes and things like this. So be careful, wear an apron, whatever. Use this, let it sit for a couple of five minutes, and then wipe it all down. Okay, so you're dealing with a nice clean cooking surface. Before you start cooking, wash your hands. Don't just dunk your hands in the water. Actually wash them, 20 seconds. Some people will sing happy birthday song or something, but 20 seconds is a long time. And so you have to be washing them. Now, the areas that get missed the most is in here and in here they get missed when you're washing your hands. So this is why you do the hand wringing thing, okay? And make sure you get them all washed really, really well. 
in the area of, of cleaning, as you're cooking, let's say you're using some knives, right? So now you've got some dirty knives. And yeah, you want to have the sink ready so that you can wash as you go. However, not for knives. Never, never, never for knives. What I normally do is I will either wash them immediately or I will put them in my second sink. And I will leave them here so that they get washed on their own. I just, I'm just healing from a cut I got the other day because somebody put a knife in the sink when my back was turned when I was washing the dishes. And of course, you go into the sink and you can't see what's in there because it's soapy water. You go into the sink and the next thing you know, you slice your finger open, which I did, okay? If you're washing dishes with other people, let them know. Put the knives separately, I washed them last. Okay, the other thing I wanna go over with cleaning is your cutting boards. Always use two different cutting boards. One for veg, salads, raw things. Another one for meat. Now, whichever one you choose to use for which is fine. Just keep it that way. Um, the most important thing is that when you're done cleaning your cutting boards, you allow them to dry. Don't just take them and, oh, okay, now they're stacked together and I'm going to put them where I put my cutting boards. Because what ends up happening is you get moisture gets trapped underneath here and that's how bacteria grows. So always, always let your cutting boards, whether plastic or wood, air dry and dry out completely so there's no moisture left. Really, really important. And always change your cutting boards when they're getting really tattered and battered. And I like to have two completely different looking cutting boards so that I don't get confused as to which one's for fruits and veg and which one's for meat. On a side note about cutting boards, the only thing I do advise, whether you, wherever you fall in the debate, wood, rice, plastic, is that you don't use glass. Glass just ruins your knives, that's it. Just ruins your knives. So if you wanna have a nice glass cutting board to display cheese and whatnot, great. But don't use a knife on glass. Okay, so what else do we need to cover? <clears throat> that pretty much covers the cleaning part. We're gonna we're gonna touch a little bit more on that when we get to the cleaning part or the cooking part. So hang tight. I'll let you know when we get there. <clears throat> Storage of your foods. Okay, this is really important, and we had discussed in a previous video about using our labels, okay? And transferring uh, packaged food into their own containers, right? So if you choose to do this, which is a very, very smart idea, however, what you wanna do is any foods that do have an expiry date, make sure you put it on the label. And don't just keep topping it up. If, you're, if your container's down to this much, and you go and buy a new whatever, don't dump this in here because this has, a, the, whatever's left in the bottom has a different expiry date than what you just put in the top. And that's never gonna get used, it's all at the bottom. And if, if you, there's a chance that it can go bad or rancid, it will affect all of it. So if, you, if you're down to this much, great. Buy your, your, your replacement, but just keep that put away until you've emptied this out, then refill this. Give it a rinse and refill it. Um, when it comes to putting food in the fridge or freezer, uh, it is really important to label your food. Put the date when it went in and um, what it is. If you find anything that has been there for a while and it does not have a label because you just weren't doing that. When it comes to food, if you're not sure, chuck it. I mean, that's the safest thing to do is chuck it. Um, when it comes to storage in your refrigerator, you have to, 
the most important thing is if you're thawing out food, uh, say uh, chicken for supper tomorrow night, raw meats always go at the bottom of the fridge. And you do this for a very important reason. If something happens to your container and you get any dripping from that container, you don't want it dripping onto all your other food. Usually what I do is if I'm thawing in the fridge, I will automatically put whatever I'm thawing into a dish. And in that way, if something happens that it starts to leak, it's leaking into the dish. But I always put it down at the bottom at the in the fridge so that nothing bad happens to it. It's, it's below all the other food. Um, now let's talk about storage of utensils. We went through this the other day when I showed you my drawers. Um, I have a knife holder. I'll show you. I have a knife holder right there. But I also do have a knife in my drawer. However, it has a cover. It's a ceramic knife, which are extremely sharp, and it has a cover. Never put knives in a drawer on their own without a cover or without a drawer block or something because you will damage the knives, first of all. Second of all, you can hurt yourself. Tuck into your drawer, cut your hand. So let's just not do that, okay? Now, on to food prep. So you've got yourself a nice clean kitchen. You're all ready to go. You've got um, your sink has got soapy water in it. You've washed your hands. Now you're gonna do your food prep because we really encourage doing a mise en place. A mise en place means everything in its place. So when you're going to cook a meal, you get all of the ingredients ready. You don't, you don't go through the recipe and gather them as you need them. No, you, you gather them into the little dishes and have them ready to go. So that when you're cooking, you know, A, you've got all the ingredients you need. Nothing like getting to point in a recipe, you know, ah, I have no brown sugar, ah. And you know what you've put in there and what you haven't put into the recipe. So you get to a certain point in the recipe and it says, add the brown sugar. And you go, oh, did I add the brown sugar? I can't remember if I added the brown sugar. You don't want it so sweet that because you added double the brown sugar, but you don't want it not sweet because you needed the brown sugar and forgot it. So the mise en place is really, really important. Now, when it comes to creating your mise en place, normally you will end up doing some produce or veg preparation. And we all see the handy dandy clamshell salad kits with all the different types of lettuces and spinach and things like this. And if you read the package, it says triple washed. Don't believe it for a second. Even if they do triple wash it, you need to wash it again. So always, always trip, uh, rewash your pre-washed vegetables. Use it in a salad spinner, what have you, but make sure you dry it really well and uh, wash it really well. Never dig into a pre-washed salad and use it as is. As far as meat, and this is where we're getting back to the washing bit again, you don't need to wash your meat. The only thing that washing your meat will do is have the potential to spread bacteria around your kitchen. Because you know you're going to turn the water on really strong and the splashing will go everywhere. So especially when you're dealing with raw chicken, don't wash it. Keep everything as contained as possible on your particular cutting board that's designated for meats. Dry it out with paper towel. Never use your kitchen cloth for raw chicken, raw meats, and then expect that it can go into the sink and be cleaned properly. It doesn't work that way. I like to have a paper towel and once I'm done and I've used my sanitizer, use the paper towel, out it goes. No chance of it contaminating everything. Um, when it comes to food prep and your knives, 
You need sharp knives. Don't be frightened of sharp knives. Sharp knives are your friends. A dull knife will hurt you. Why is that? People will so often say, yeah, but a sharp knife can cut more than a dull knife. No, actually what ends up happening is when you have a sharp knife, it will go through the food a lot easier and you're not gonna have to push down really, really hard and then thus risking the knife slipping and cutting you. Normally when people cut themselves really badly, it's usually with a dull knife. So have sharp knives, respect your knife, protect your fingers. Now, when you're going to use a sharp knife, you need to use the claw technique. You don't sit here and cut your veg like this, okay? You're gonna create this claw. And if you ever are dealing with a vegetable that is really wobbly, don't worry about slicing off the end so it sits flatly, but always use the claw. Always, always, always. And your knife, comes, never goes above your knuckles, because you can see what can happen. It always stays below your knuckles, but you use your knuckles as the guard. Now, if you do have knives that you think are dull and you don't know how to sharpen them, don't sharpen them yourself. Take them to someone who can sharpen them professionally and properly. Now there's a bit of a debate surrounding ceramic knives and steel knives. Ceramic knives are very sharp, yes they are, but they tend to chip. See, the tip of mine is chipped. And the reason why that happens is when you're cutting with a ceramic blade, you can't do sideways motion in order to kind of pry things doesn't work you'll break the knife if you drop the knife you will break the knife if you're cutting into meat and you hit a bone you can break the knife so if you received a ceramic knife or you like using ceramic knife I quite like my ceramic knife because it's nice and light very very sharp make sure you have a cover for it and make sure that you are cutting soft vegetables soft cheeses and none of this torquing motion when you're dealing with a ceramic knife. Otherwise, just use a really good steel knife. And you can get a really good one for $20 or $30. Don't think you have to buy a $200 knife. Now, also, when you're doing something food prep wise, use the right tool. Don't sit there and use a knife when you're supposed to be using a peeler. If you're peeling vegetables, Use a peeler. It's two reasons. You're a lot less likely to slip when you are peeling with a peeler. And you're going to take off a lot less meat with a peeler than you are with a knife. Unless you're really, really good. My mother used to be able to take it just a hairline, just the skin, and that was it. However, when you're peeling with a knife, your tendency is to cut deeper and take more of the flesh of a potato and whatnot. So, Use the right tool. If you don't have the right tool, don't try to make it up as you go along. That just makes for a good potential for accidents. Now, now, what else do we want to talk about? Washing your produce, always wash your produce. If you have a scrubby that's just for vegetables, that would be really good in order to wash things like cucumbers and stuff. They have that waxy film on them. Make sure you wash them. Wash all of them. Always, always, always. And don't be afraid to use your salad spinner for something other than salad. You can easily wash veg and then put it in the salad spinner to give it a dry. Sometimes I'll do that if I'm doing uh, really thinly sliced potatoes and whatnot and I want to dry them quick. I'll put them in a salad spinner. Okay, let's get on to the cooking portion. Now, when you're going to cook, your biggest appliance that you're going to use is your stove, of course. Now, 
what we're going to do here is I'm just going to move this over here. There we go. And I think I might end up turning you around. There we go. Okay. All right. So here's our stove. Now, what you'll notice, I'm going to go covered. Let's just see here. So we've got our pot on the stove, and this is not cool. It's not cool for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's way at the back and you're reaching over the pot and that will give you the potential to burn your arm on steam. Not good. Now, yes, the handle is at the back, which is good, but it's over top of another element. If you turn this element on and then try to move this, you're going to burn yourself. So the rule of thumb, always have the handle not over where it can get bumped. However, do not have it over another element. So when you're looking at, you've got two pans going on here. Okay, again, let's get our handles in the right direction. Okay, so we have that one, and we have that one. Okay? So always make sure you've got the handles where they're not going to either get bumped or Get, get heated up by another element. This leads us to another really important thing. Let's take you back here and turn you around. There we are. Now, when you're going to be cooking, it's really important that you are not wearing baggy clothes. It's really important. Oops. There we go. So you'll notice what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a hoodie. Even when I take my sleeves down, they are not all baggy, but they allow me to also bring them up. I'm not wearing jewelry that is hanging all down. Don't do that because when we're dealing with our pots and our pans, you're going to end up snagging on something. It's going to happen. We don't want that to happen or you, you, it'll dip into the water and whatnot. It's a, it's a bad news. I've even found when I'm wearing necklaces, if I'm cooking in the oven and I open up the oven door, my necklace can get really, really hot and it can actually burn you. So be careful with your jewelry. Normally when I'm cooking, my hair goes up. It ends up up because A, I don't want to get hair in my food and I don't want to have anything bad happen with my hair. So. Your jewelry, your baggy clothes, let's be careful of all of that. Put your hair up. And whenever you're going to check your food, this is another really important thing. Never go, oh, how's it going? To check your food. You always have to open it up away from you so that the steam rises away from you. And when it comes to opening the oven door, so many people will have their hands at the oven door and look in just like this. Well, that's a good way to get a big blast of heat. Open it up while you're standing back. Allow some of the heat to escape. Then you can sit there and look and see what's going on with your food. Okay? Um, pot holders. There's a reason why there are so many different kinds of pot holders or oven mitts out there because everybody has their own preference. Uh, this was my oldest and dearest, and you notice it's been used a lot, gotten singed, gotten burnt. I mean, that's what it's there for, it's there to protect us from these things. So, old tried, tried and true. Then I got this really wild one I, I read about that has silicone on it. So you're supposed to be able to grab your pots and pans really easily. Well, I tried it once, you notice it's barely used. Just because I never use it. I don't like it. I don't like how it feels in my hands. I don't feel safe when I'm holding something. 
I don't feel like I'm gripping it properly. And when you're dealing with hot pots and pans, you need to feel like you're confident with what you're doing. I never use this one. I still keep it. Don't know why. I think it's because maybe I put pots on top of it or something. I don't know. But I don't like it. Then I found one that, that had a thumb and the same silicone stuff. Now you'll notice, barely used again. Again, I didn't like it. There was just so much going on here. I just didn't feel like I could grip a pan properly. So then, I found these guys. Now these guys have been used. They're stained and they've just been used for everything. This is perfect. These are the oven gloves. I use these all the time and it allows me to grip them. I'm confident. I it it actually protects up into my wrist areas, which I really, really like. And the takeaway from that is only use an oven glove or oven mitt or pot holder that you're actually going to use. Put it in your hand. Try to pick something up. If you're comfortable with it, use it. If you're not, do not use it. Don't use any kind of oven mitt or pot holder. You are not 100% confident in your abilities to use it. Put it away. Don't do it again. Now, if for some reason, sad, sad, my oven glove got wet while I was cooking, guess what? I'm going to have to use something else because I cannot go and grab a hot utensil with the wet glove. Same with these guys. If these get wet, no, you can't use it because the water will transfer the heat really, really quickly. Now, if you're a tea towel kind of girl or guy and use tea towels, Use tea towels to pick up your hot pots and things like this. Don't do that. And they get wet. Don't do that for sure because the heat will transfer immediately to your hand and you will get burnt really fast. So only dry utensils or dry mitts and pot holders and no tea towels. I'm talking to you. Okay. Now. The other thing is your distraction level. If you're cooking with the stove, no distractions are allowed. So, if you normally can watch videos or whatnot, especially if you're using a new recipe, don't. Just focus on the recipe, focus, focus, focus. And put something in the background that will be background that you do not need to focus on. Uh, if somebody phones or somebody comes to the door, do you know what? What you're doing with the stove takes priority over somebody who's at the door or somebody who is phoning. If somebody phones or rings the doorbell, you immediately assess your stove. If you can turn all the elements off, if you need to leave the room. I have my phone right here. I can answer the phone without leaving the room. If I have to leave the room, then I have to turn the stove off, unless, You've got something on a timer. Let's say something's in the oven and it's got a timer. That's fine. You don't need to turn the oven off. But if you've got something boiling on the stove, you need to turn the element off, then leave the kitchen. Okay? Um, and whoever's at the door is just going to have to wait until you can actually do, do this. Okay? Um, <coughs> pardon me. Coffee. Coffee break. Um, as far as, let's say you've got, uh, you're concerned that somebody is causing a distraction for you, like coming to the door or something, and you really don't want to get stuck talking for a long time. Uh, somebody told me this trick and it's really quite good. If you're concerned about being away from what you're doing for too long and you feel uncomfortable saying, whoever's at the door, I can't talk, I'm cooking, set a timer on your on your stove or your microwave or whatnot for one minute, two minutes, whatever. While you're at the door or on the phone, the timer will go off. Then you can say, oh, I have to go, my timer just went off. And then normally people will say, oh, okay, no problem, go back to what you're doing, yay. Then you're off the hook, then you're back cooking. Um, now let's just say, you're cooking and you burn something. 
accidents are going to happen. Don't worry about it. Don't freak out. You burnt your food. Okay. The only thing you don't do, you don't take whatever you burnt, scoop it out, and throw it in the garbage right away. Do you know why? Because you can start a fire. The food that you just put in the garbage is really, really hot. You burnt it. And if you've got plastic bags or whatever, whatever you can you can melt the plastic or potentially start a fire. If you burn something, put it aside, let it cool, then it goes into the garbage or the compost or whatever. Um, let's just say you spill some grease. Worst case scenario, you spill some grease, you got to clean it up. Okay. Don't you, you, you need to use the right things to clean up the grease. Soap. Soap uh, is meant to break down grease. So clean it up as, as good as you can. If you need to turn the element off and then get everything all cleaned up, great. Let's say you spilt something and whoosh, there's a fire. First of all, let's say there's a fire in a pot. The first thing you do is put the lid on it. Fire needs oxygen to grow and to be. Let's take the oxygen away, put a lid on it. The next thing you can do is use baking soda. That's why part of the reason I keep my baking soda right next to the stove. If something were to happen and let's say grease spilt on the stove top and caught fire, you open up the, your baking soda and you sprinkle it all over the fire. You suffocate the fire. Then you clean it up. If it's a little bit bigger than that, if you notice right there, everybody must have a fire extinguisher in their kitchen. And you must know how to use it. You need to be shown how to use a fire extinguisher. If you're dealing with something where the baking soda uh, or covering the pot won't do it, but it's still manageable, use your fire extinguisher. You're going to make a big old mess. It's going to be terrible but it's better than your whole kitchen going up in flames. If it's beyond what you think you can handle with a fire extinguisher, you get out and you call 911. You don't, you're, you're not going to fight a fi kitchen fire, full on kitchen fire. You just get out of the house. But everybody needs to have one of these and they need to have fire smoke detectors. Um, if another situation were to happen where let's say you drop glass. You break glass. This glass breaks everywhere. All right. Don't just try to sweep it up and dump it in the garbage. It doesn't work that way. You pick up with, if you need to use your up gloves, pick up the big pieces. You put them in a paper bag. And if you don't have paper bags, then you go and get some newspaper, old flyers, whatnot. Put three or four layers Put your big shards of glass on the newspaper and then you take a wet paper towel, just a damp paper towel, and that's what you use to pick up the smaller pieces because the smaller pieces will stick to the wet paper towel. You gather that up, you put it into the paper, bundle up the paper, then put that in your recycling or the garbage. Um, you don't put glass into plastic bags and whatnot because A, if you put your hand in there, you can cut your hand. And glass tends to go straight through plastic. It doesn't do that with paper. So always clean up broken glass appropriately. If you were to spill something, you spilled something on the floor, don't leave it. Clean it up immediately. Get it done right away. And make sure that if you use soapy water, that you rinse it so it's not slippery. Um, what else have we got going on here? Any appliances that you're using, make sure you know how to use them and use them correctly. Uh, go over the manual and we even discuss um, reviewing your appliance manuals, knowing how to use them, use them appropriately. Never plug in your appliance with wet hands or after in water. I mean, if you're standing in water, you've got to, you know, your floor should not be covered in water, okay? But the key is after you've washed your hands, you need to dry your hands really well, then you plug in your appliances. Um, don't be afraid 
to make mistakes in the kitchen. It's going to happen. I mean, as long as you know how to deal with them, it's okay. And if you can prevent accidents as much as possible, I mean, that's all you can really do. Uh, the one thing I would say is in my little side cupboard here, I always have a mini first aid kit. I have a bigger one downstairs, but in the kitchen, I always have my mini first aid kit. And if you have all your bases covered, then it should be good. And if you play smart in the kitchen, knowing how to make the claw and making sure your knives are sharp and making sure you sanitize your counters um, and making sure that you're not wearing baggy clothes or that your hair is not getting all in the way and your jewelry, all of these kinds of things are going to make it so that you're actually preventing accidents from happening. And then any accidents that do happen, you can deal with. Um, one of the, the final things I wanted to go over is when you're in the cooking process and you're cooking meat, what I want you to do is I want you to either write down or print out a little list and tape it in your, in your cupboard. Like I have my information sheets on my cupboard and it tells you the safe cooking temperatures for meat so that when you're cooking you will not take the shortcut of not looking it up to make sure that you're at the right temperature. So when we're dealing with things like reheating food, you have to make sure that it's around, it's 140, uh, which is 60 Celsius. Uh, when you're dealing with pork or veal or lamb, you want it at 145 Fahrenheit or 62-ish centigrade. Anything ground, you want to put it, make sure it's cooked to 160 Fahrenheit or 71 Celsius. Chicken, the really important guy, is 165 Fahrenheit or 73 Celsius. So make sure you have those temperatures actually written down. Don't, don't keep them up here. It won't happen. It won't stay. Make sure you write it down and put it in your cupboard. Tape it to this inside of your cupboard. Your cupboards are fantastic. You can tape all kinds of information on the inside of your cupboard. And... You don't have to worry about trying to memorize it, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create some links below this video to other uh, similar information that we have on the website so you can go back and refer to it. Um, review this video a couple of times, especially when you're just getting going and if you want to, if you're thinking about reorganizing your kitchen, keeping some of these things in mind as you're reorganizing. I'm going to I'm going to post this to Facebook and YouTube and of course to the website. And we have a dedicated area in the website that just says our videos right on the very top and that's where we are listing all of our videos. So you can just go there and have a look and all the videos are there. And we'll also embed them in some of the articles as well. Anyways, okay, that's all for me today. I will talk to you later and see you on the website. Make sure you like us or follow us so that you will know when we are coming up online again. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.